All right, good afternoon everybody. It's Jay again. So I'm standing under the shade of a fig tree and I kind of want to go over fig trees real quick and touch on them because they're really successful in the valley and for some reason this year it's a particularly good year on figs. So let me let me kind of show you the the canopy of this fig tree. You can see it goes pretty far up there. Pretty far up. He's tall because he is an espalier. So this is one of the espalier trees that I've got here against the fence. Let me see if I can back up so you guys can see how large this one has gotten. Nice big tall fig tree. And what's nice about it this year is it's starting to kind of bow over the pathway here. And it's kind of creating an arch, an archway here that I can walk under of these, of these fig branches. And the other nice thing about it too is it's pulled all the fruit down here this year where I can access it all. So if you look on the tips of every one of these branches, these things are just full, full of figs. See how many figs are on clustered on the end of each one of these branches and really every one of them is like that every one of these branches is loaded up on the tip and it's pulling that down towards the ground where i can now actually harvest all the figs off this tree quite conveniently but man it just really really stacking on the figs this year every one of these branches just beautiful but yeah there's a lot of figs on this one this year and they're starting to ripen up so this is a yellow fig or a white fig on the inside this is a kadota fig and i noticed really kind of the there's really kind of two problems on fig trees here in phoenix and one is they get a lot of sun scalding so especially a newer fig tree um in the valley or a younger tree is going to get a lot of sun scorching uh, so it's going to get a lot of these leaves that kind of just flash fry and fall off right about this time of the year and hopefully you can provide it just a little bit of shade in order for it to fill back in its canopy and then once it gets a full canopy it's going to have these nice tough leaves like these are like almost like cardboard out here that can really sustain the the heat but you can see the fruit on them is just just beautiful and man ooh, look at that branch let me see if i can pull that one down Wow. Wow. Let's see if I can do this justice here a little bit. Leaves kind of hide the fruit, but wow, look, there you go. Just this one branch is quite full of figs. So sun scorching is one major problem with figs. People think they're a lot tougher than they are, and they are. They just need to get adjusted. Oh man, there's so many figs at the top. There's so many figs up there. Oh my gosh, oh, birds will probably get those. <laughs> I get all these down here by me, I'm, I'm happy with that. And then the other problem is uh, figs drying up and falling off. So you'll notice that a lot of the figs will, before they even set a fruit, uh, they'll become dry and hard and they'll start falling off your tree before you ever get any fruit, any nice, wonderful, ripe uh, fruits off your fig tree. And what causes that is that's just a watering issue. So that's not giving them enough water. I don't think people realize how much water that fig trees actually need, especially when they're fruiting. Like they might not need it so much when they're not fruiting, but if you want wonderful fruit like this and tons and tons of fruit, well then you're gonna have to step up the water just a little bit on these, especially during their fruiting season. So these, these fig trees, they grow great big here in properties that have flood irrigation because they've got all that extra water, which can sustain a, a larger tree and more fruit. But I'm thinking down here, if you've got uh, more drip, uh, drip irrigation or you're kind of hand watering, wow, that thing's gotten big because it goes into the neighbor's yard too. Look at this big old fig branch there and probably one on the back. Yeah, so this one's gotten quite quite large and I do trim on this one occasionally for uh, grafting purposes or for starting them um, from cuttings 
because this is a very strong tree and it's very productive and the fruit is really good on this one. So this one I like to propagate. But yeah, you guys are gonna have to step up the water a little bit if you're if you're keeping the trees a little bit larger. Um, if you wanna keep it shorter and bushier, it's gonna require less water. Um, and they do need some sunlight in order to provide fruit, but that is under the assumption that a lot of their stems and trunks are covered in shade and not exposed to the Arizona sun because can you kill a fig tree putting it in the center of your yard? Of course you can. All right guys, so that's figs. This is a Kadota fig. If you were wondering, this is a wonderful fig down here in the valley. And the birds kind of leave it alone. Like you kind of noticed walking through there, there's maybe one or two fruits that might have got pecked, but other than that, they they sort of leave them alone. They like the dark colored figs. <laughs> so if you got a mission fig or something like that in the yard, then I guess kind of beware on that. But this is a really good tree for all around in the valley. But that just kind of covers just a little bit of fig trees there. And I'll go into depth more on other videos, but I thought I'd catch this one today since they're fruiting and you guys probably are not watering because it's hot outside and you don't want to be out there. But know that they need a lot of water right now and you can kind of tail that off in a little bit. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. End of June here, Phoenix, Arizona, figs. There's so many wonderful summer fruits out there. Just nobody wants to go out there and collect them. But yes, you can get fruit all year long off of your trees, off of your food forest, but you gotta be willing to go out there and harvest it. All right, guys, thank you for watching.